Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor for WebPixel, and I'm very honoured to be joined today by Mr. Edward Lai from Nordicam. Hello, Edward. Hello. Good morning, Adam. Good morning. Where are you? To, where are you today, sir? Uh, I'm in in China, uh, inside the the Nordicam uh, factory. Gosh, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of the wet pixel live audience. I think that would like to be in the factory with you, having a look at what you're up to. <laughs> it's, I'm sure they'd be very fascinated. We should do a we should do a factory tour at some point. That would be a, a good thing to do. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Yeah, yeah um, maybe. Yeah, I would like to show you some automation uh, downstairs. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We should we should make that happen. Anyway, it's lovely to have you, Edward. And, and Edward has kindly sent this picture of the entire range of um, Nauticam wet or they're not all wet optics optics um water contact optics maybe the best way to describe them because they're not all wet um and it's an amazing range so edward how long have you been designing wet contact optics mm, a little bit of story about uh yeah. my actually my meeting with uh dr alex master uh that was uh i think february of 2013 uh at that time he he he, he was the um one of the moderator of uh webpixel which still is yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. 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 So it is such a very important uh website for me yeah uh actually in in 2006 when i was diving in palau on a liverpool uh at that time it was called big big blue explorer there was a young lady working uh, on the boat. He works for Scuba Shoe. Those the Scuba Shoe. Scuba Shoe, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jason. Yeah, yeah, Jason. Yeah. At that time, we always have Jan for purpose uh, working on Liverpool or uh, resort, taking pictures for the guests. And at the end, they they, they sell the, 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 the city room uh, with all the pictures of the yeah. trip. Yeah, yeah. At that time, I don't know much about underwater photography. I don't know much about all the theory. I don't know much, much about optics. And um, she just mentioned, if you want to know more about all this underwater uh, photography thing, maybe you should look up uh, that website where you can find a lot of information. And then I find the website, Webso, and I find all this uh, interesting topics that really ah. interest me and I, I learned so much from 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 that. Uh, so I have to thank uh, Eric Chen who started this, I think yeah, around yeah. the year 2000 and also Adam, you continue this great work of uh, serving the, the, the underwater uh, society. Thank you. So for that meeting with uh, uh, Alex, um, he just finished uh, a review of our D800 housing which he posts on uh, Webpixel. And he and he he, 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 he told me, hey, Edward, you know, you, you have been making really, really good housing. You, it is fantastic, mechanically. <laughs> I, I think you, you make one of the best uh, mechanical housing for this society. But what is the next step? I said, well, uh, uh, maybe we need some better lenses. And he said, yeah, that's the point. No one is making good lenses. At that time, I was shoot, trying to shoot a, a, a better macro and I find that it's not very sharp. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and we, we both share that uh, probably there is a lot to improve if somebody can uh, work on the optics. So that give me the initiative, even a little bit of the pressure to, 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 to try to work on these things. And actually before meeting him, I, I already start uh, researching a little bit about uh, optics. So uh, that meeting with Alex in uh, Milan, uh, February of 2013, really gave me a big push yeah. going to that uh, direction. So, so I start to look into all those uh, technology, all those books, and I, I start to look into what kind of software I can use, take the training and 
bought the software and start to do some design. Yeah, that was the beginning. Mm-hmm. And the first, what was the first product then? What was the first optical product, Edward? Sorry. Uh, by the end of two thousand and thirteen, I I successfully make the first uh, macro lens. Yeah. And we, we call that F- SMC one. Yeah. Uh, that that so- was the one. That was the one that Alex and I had in Lembe. We had it. I think we had it in 2013, didn't we, as the prototype? I think it was you who had to carry that to Lembe. Uh, oh, yeah, it might have been. Already in I, Lembe. Someone I, helped me to take that lens to Lembe. To I, th- I think it might have been Jason, actually. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But yes, I do remember the. Or maybe I picked it up from David in Singapore. I, I can't hear yeah, you're right. There was a story. Yes, there was a story. <laughs> I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I somehow I, I told him, oh, I, I finished uh, the first product. Uh, I just tested briefly in uh, Taiwan. Yeah. And I find it uh, very good, yeah. very sharp. Uh, yeah, it was. So I went to Conjas and, and they said, why, why don't you send it to me? I'm, I'm, I'm in the, the, the micro paradise. I'm in, I'm in Lembe. So I, I, somehow I think Jack Quinn or Phoebe got someone to, to carry that lens to you. Yeah, no, I remember. Yeah, and, and we used it. We, I mean, we had a workshop out there. It was the first of the, the wet pixel macro workshops, and we used it. And it and immediately, you know, the, the the imagery coming out of it was 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 hugely impressive, and and was certainly better than than anything we had before. Um, and you know, and I think that um, I think one of the pictures that Alex took on that workshop with that lens was actually the placed in in wildlife photography of the year it's the picture of the the kubiana the, the embrotha um so you know straight away you know optically people were doing things that they couldn't do before which was which was is the whole name of the game so <laughs> so i mean I, again your your range of optics that you have now is huge um edward and and obviously i know that recently you've added some new product optical products so and, and I know the web pixel community, which obviously we, 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 we're very glad that you're you're a supporter of, um, is very interested in the new version of WACP. So maybe sh- shall we talk a little bit about? So where does where did the idea of producing WACP come from originally? Where did that start from? Mm, after we finish maybe two or three products in in the macro uh, area. Mm. Uh, I, I was thinking maybe I can uh, do something in the in the Ryango uh, area. Actually, at that time, uh, I have a lot of communication with uh, Alex. Yeah. He also pushed me a little bit. Hey, it's fine now with the the, the, the macro area. What about the the, the Ryango? Yeah. Uh, actually, I, I don't remember which one came first. I I I. Actually, I was trying to make a, a fisheye lens. Right. First. Yeah. Uh, I, I still have the probe tie here. <laughs> this is a, a, a fisheye lens I, 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 I ah. made. Yeah. Uh, Gosh. Because people always complain about, uh, for example, for the Sony uh, uh, mirrors full fame, there's no fish fisheye lens. Actually, I make this fisheye lens. With a with a yeah focus, so manual focus, yeah, 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 yeah. got it. Yeah, manual manual aperture control. Ah, okay, yeah, I see, yeah, 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 excellent. But then I find it actually, if we assemble it perfectly, it is it is very sharp. It is as sharp as the uh, the Nikonos RS fisheye lens. Right. Actually, at that time, I was trying. I'm trying to compare this with the Nikonos uh, RS. The, the 13. Lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the 13 mm. Actually, it, it it did, but we find it too too difficult for us to to manufacture that, because as a as a small company. We can't uh, afford to invest heavily in um, all the measurement and adjustment and calibration uh, device to calibrate individual uh, lens. Yeah. 
um, it can be a market. It's fine if we, we make one or two prototypes and adjust it carefully and, and mount it on the on the, the camera. But for the mass protection, for yeah. example, the, the, the focus have to be so accurate that the, the infinity is going to be infinity. Otherwise, yeah. the whole scale is off. Yeah. And we find, we just find that as a small company, it's too difficult. So uh, instead of making a, a full lens, then I think maybe we just make a add-on lens so that yeah. people can put a normal lens on the camera and then they yeah. can widen the, the angle of view from the yeah. outside. Yeah. And actually, this, this is not new. This has been available for many years. I, I think you remember um, in the old days when you buy a, a, a video housing, you, you can buy a Fathoms yeah. lens yeah. To, to, to widen the angle. Yeah, uh, and, and, and I mean, they, they, there was the Zeiss Ribikoff, wasn't there, which was which exactly was exactly that. It, the Zeiss Ribikoff was a, was a conversion lens, wasn't it? It was a lens that sat in front. And, and I mean, that that's, I mean, when was the Zeiss Ribikoff? 60s, 50s, 60s? I mean, it's, you know, it's, yeah, it was an idea that that's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but in, in in those days, the, the the angle of view was not so large. I remember yeah. some of the the, the uh lenses were something like eighty degrees, ninety degrees, and the the, the maximum one, the big one, was like a hundred degree. Yeah. So um, for me at that time, as a uh, as a beginner, was quite. Restricted to, yeah, yeah. To, 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 to enlarge the angle. I remember, actually, I, I made the first lens, which was 100 degree, which, which, which was quite, quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But my partner, Ryan, said that that's useless, Edward. Yeah. <laughs> you have to make it wider. So my, my next one was 110 degree, and, and he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> And when, when, when I went uh, to um, that, um, that trip with you. Like me? Uh, yeah. Yeah, to the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah. I had one. That was 120 degrees. I remember, yeah. 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 And still, uh, Ryan, Ryan said, it's, it's good, it's okay, but it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. So my last sample was 100, 130 degrees until. We think it's fine now. Uh, we we can uh, sell that, but but then that become the WWL, which yeah. which was a bad lens. Yeah. Um, and during one of my communication with uh, Alex, he said that because of the, the actually the, the 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 objective of the bad lens in in the very beginning was for point and shoot cameras. Yeah. And he said. Is there any solution for for full frame camera? Yeah. So I, I I went back to to my computer and I start to scale it up and try to make uh, something for the full frame. And uh, then a uh, uh, first sample was was made. I test it and Alex tests it and we we find it to be acceptable, but not brilliant. Yeah. So uh, when, when we have a, a, all this a conversation, we decided that probably we have to allow the lens to, to grow a little bit bigger, bigger and, heavy, yeah. and, and then more costly to produce yeah. in order to, to give that a shock. To the to, to the to the market, a lens that really really can give the message to to the market that this is a solution going to be much better than a Dompo. So, and I think uh, I, I think for those that, that, that possibly are wondering the the advantage that we get from from WCP and 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 similar lenses is that we can now shoot at apertures that are much much wider apertures than we can shoot with conventional dome ports, particularly with relatively rectilinear lenses. Um, so, and the advantage, of course, obviously in the water, one of the things we're typically struggling is is lack of light. So, so being able to now shoot at f five point six or even f four, uh, as opposed to having to shoot at 
F12, F14, F16 makes a huge difference in terms of creative opportunity. So, so what WACP and to an extent WWL have done is they've allowed a whole range of images to be created that really couldn't be created before. I think I think this is a really important evolutionary step in 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 in, in underwater photography. Yeah. Actually, I remember that um, when I was testing one of the first uh, WACP lens, I was with Stephen Wong yep. in Palau. I still remember the first picture I, I took with the, my Sony camera with yep. the lens. Actually, I wow myself in the water. Yeah. <laughs> it's so sharp. Yeah. And then Brilliant. I. I I bent on uh, Stephen's uh, tank and, and showed him the picture, and he said, "Whoa!" <laughs> we, we, both, we are both that happy when we saw the, the first picture uh, from from the lens. Actually, a, a lot of people try to compare the the, the, the quality of the picture uh, of a of one that uh, shot by the WCT compared with a normal um, dump pot. They always refer to the corners. But actually, I find that it is not just the corners. If you look at the, the whole picture, um, yeah. or, or just the center part of it, actually you, you find the kind of contrast, the kind of uh, detail, and the color tone is also quite improved. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, I even don't know how to explain that. Yep. And over the years, maybe I can try to explain it this way. Be because the lens correct for all the diffraction from the water. So maybe I can explain it that for each pixel on the sensor, you are getting less uh, distortion from, from from all the different colors of light. That's sub, supposed yeah. to be coming to the next pixel. So each pixel on the sensor is, is cleaner yeah. because you don't have all the uh, distortion from uh, aberration, from uh, this... Uh, Reflection, I presume, yeah. 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 Uh, what we call. So, so I think, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think what we're saying basically is the quality of the light that is emer that's coming to the sensor is better with WACP or um, than it would be with um, a conventional dome port and lens, and that means that you know you've got better light coming in. Photography is all about light. The better the quality, the better the image is going to be. That's I think that's what we're saying, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, the work is diffraction. So because diffraction, because. Sorry. Yeah, because uh, with, without the, the corrective optics, yeah, you take diffraction yeah. in all directions. So so each pixel, if you are using a normal lens or just a, a dumbo, each yeah. pixel on the sensor is getting the diffraction yeah. from 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 the lens, which is yeah. supposed to be to be land on the next uh, pixel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it spreads it about. Yeah. So so this is basically ensuring. I mean, this is this is essentially a corrected image is is always going to be better than a, a standard. And I mean, ultimately, dome ports are a compromise. You know, they're a they're a solution to a problem, um, but they're they they have their own set of problems, don't they? And the advantage you you have of designing a lens is that you can now say, okay, well, we're going to deliberately design a lens to deal with those problems. Yeah. That's true. When I look at an image. Especially when I look at a, a video clip, I can quite readily tell people this is from a dome port, yeah. and then this is from a correct lens. Because yeah. when you use a dome port, there is another phenomenon. Uh, you get uh, what I call the stretching effect at the four corners. So you yeah. can see elongation of the, the path or fish or the rock yeah. at the four corners. Yeah. And it is especially um, noticeable when the fish swim from one side 
go through the center part of it and swim yeah. away. You can see the the, the, the the size of the fish changes longer and become smaller in the center and become longer at, at the end. So yeah. that is yeah the long the longer kind of uh, problem I I, I I see with a dumbo. Yeah. You should video clips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so well while we're on the subject there, Edward, talk to me about barrel distortion. What what's so obviously your lenses have some barrel distortion. Now, how does that work? And obviously, we, I think we're all pretty familiar with the idea that fisheye has an exaggerated barrel distortion. But how does how does distortion affect affect the design then on, on your lenses, Edward? Actually, this, this is the first time I, I try to confess in front of everyone. Yeah, okay. I try not to correct uh, the distortion. Right. Because I can't. With just four or five or six pieces of glass, it's no way that I can correct for the distortion from the lens. Yeah. So uh, I, 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 don't con I don't try to control the distortion or use the control as one of my objective of design my uh, optics because yep. actually those distortion actually comes from the lens that's mounted on the camera not 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 from the the my optics yeah in a way a red lens exaggerate the distortion because originally maybe the, the lens is only uh 70 degree or 75 degree and then widen it to uh, 130 degree. That means the, the distortions uh, a little bit um, increased. Yeah. Yeah. By, Makes sense. By the, the red lens. Actually, I, I can't control that because it is from from from, from the lens itself. It's not yeah. from my optics. Yeah. But I, I hope I can I can explain that because actually. The, the barrel distortion is a very natural effect. Yeah. From my lens. Yeah. I hope I can I can I can I can say it in, a very, in some very simple words. Um, for example, if you have a lens that uh, that has a, 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 a horizontal uh, angle of view of um, eighty degrees, that yeah. means one side of it has got forty degrees. Yeah. And for each 10 degrees, if, if you, you draw the, 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 the angles, yep. you, you find that the outer 10 degree actually suits a much, much larger range. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Upper, yeah, yeah. Upper area because it, it is at yep. an angle. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, the, the last 10 degree, you have more area of the scene being compressed yep. onto the sensor. Yep. And it is especially um, exaggerated when you look at not just the, the S's. Yep. If you look at the, 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 the corner, yep. it is a compass angle. Yep. It has a, a bigger angle. Yep. If the horizontal Angle of view is eighty degrees. The, the, the corner is more or less ninety degrees, so it has yeah. more compression. So actually, you are compressing the bigger area outside more onto onto the sensor. Oops. And if you look at the world of a round lens with a rectangular core, yeah, 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 then you 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 find that. The, the outer corners has more compression, and that forms the the, the basis of the, the the barrel. Some some normal wine go lenses they try to correct that. They they use a, a very high number of glass elements actually to try to compress the center and extend the outside so that you have less uh, barrel uh, distortion. But 
but it is very difficult uh, to do it on a zoom lens because when you zoom it, actually this, this distortion changes. So normally it is successful uh, for a short range uh, zoom lens. For example, the, the 12 to 24, uh, 16 to 35, yeah. like two time zoom, it is possible to, 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 to make certain um, improvement, improvement yeah. in the barrel distortion. Sometimes it can be very complicated. You have what we call the much uh distortion because it can't be linear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and and if you have a high power zoom, it is impossible to do that. Yeah. Uh, it can be quite linear if you have a fixed focal length lens. So certain lens that was designed for architecture, a fixed focal length lens. They can have quite good straight line yep. when you shoot right on to a building. But yep. when you tip the lens, you find huge number of elongation, huge yep. number of distortion at the corner. And especially when you shoot a, shoot a group of people, you find that the people standing on the two sides are. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so I, for me, I, I, I find that actually the barrel distortion for me is, is, is natural. It looks yeah. more natural to me, unless you have to suit, uh, architecture, unless you have a lot of strip lines. I, myself, I prefer the, 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 the barrel, uh, kind of, uh, image more, especially when you are shooting, for example, uh, uh, a huge group of a uh, huge school of fish. A long lens with some kind, some um, barrel uh, distortion. The sizes of all the fishes is quite uh, even. Yeah, if yeah. you you have a, 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 a highly correct rectilinear lens, actually you find the fishes at the four corners are, are, are much bigger than those one at the center. So your perspective gets very strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I mean. Practically, Edward, though, so if we're talking about the amounts of barrel distortion, so first of all, as you say, that's largely controlled by the camera lens, but presumably the bigger the optic on the wet, on the water contact lens, the less distortion it produces. Am I right in saying that? Is that is that the way the equation works? So practical example, WACP2 will produce less barrel distortion than WWL, for example. Am I, am I right in saying that or not really? Actually not. Um, <laughs> the WCT, WCP2 was designed for those more modern wine gold lenses. Yep. And those lenses actually uh, has less uh, barrel distortion. Ah, that's, okay. that's not because of the WCP2. It is yep. because, because of the lenses behind it. Ah. So you, you make all those lenses, the 16 to 35, uh, 14 to 24. 30, 15 to 35, they are more yes, yes, right. modern new lenses, which uh, has certain correction on the yeah. lens. Yeah. But to be honest, I don't enjoy looking at the video clip from the PCP2. Oh, One there you go. A good friend. Uh, the German guy, uh, Fischer. Florian. Uh, Tata. Florian. Tata. Yeah, from yeah, Florian. He yeah. insists he insists to use the WCB two because he, he always want the, the 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 newest, latest, greatest, best lens. Of course, okay. he yeah, WCB two. And I look at his fishball uh, clips. I don't like it because it's got <laughs> some, some stretching at the corners. <laughs> there you go. That, that's one, Fred, Eric, that's, um, Edward. That's a wonderful um, introduction to to water contact optic. Thank you very much. And cleared up some. I, I love the fact that actually distortion is down to the lens, not not, and that we should have some distortion. Otherwise, things start looking strange. That's wonderful. So, um, thank you very much. Where I mean, I'm sure most people are aware of this, but where are Nauticam on the web? Where can people find Nauticam products and, and wet lenses on the web? Uh, it, it is on uh, Nauticam.com. Uh, 
fantastic so so www.nauticam.com so go over and check them out um, and we'll we'll be revisiting another conversation with edward very shortly about some of the new products um, that have come out and um but it's been a wonderful exploration of of, of his development of water content so thank you very much um, thank you and I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add any comments in the comment section and um, start a thread on the forum about anything that we've discussed or alternatively um, to obviously and to drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.